Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over enumerations or enums in C++. So an enumeration is a special type that represents a group of named integer values. So basically, you take a group of elements or values and you assign each value an integer to represent that value. So some examples include the days of the week. Maybe you can say Sunday is zero, Monday is one, Tuesday is two, Wednesday is three, and so on. Or you can have a list of email mailboxes. So you can say inbox is zero, send folder is one, drafts is two, trash is three, and so on. And in the case of the number values, they don't really have to mean anything. It just used for representing each value. So for instance, in a list of Pokemon, if you ever played Pokemon, you know that the first Pokemon is Bulbasaur, and then you have Ivysaur and so on. And each Pokemon is assigned a number within a list. And that list doesn't have any particular order. It's just the way the Pokemons were added to the list. And you might also have enums for error codes. So enums don't have to start with zero. Instead, you can have an enum for, let's say, 404, not found, or 500 for internal server error. So these are just some examples where you might want to tie a group of values to a set of integers. So in C++, to declare an enum type, you would just type in the keyword enum. And for this example, I'm just going to use vending machine snacks to explain the concept of enums. So if you've ever used a vending machine before, you know that vending machines have a bunch of snacks and drinks. And if you want to buy a drink or snack, you would have to enter a number. So these numbers usually don't mean anything. They're just assigned to each snack. So here I'm just going to do enum snack, curly braces. And within enums, we tend to capitalize everything. So I'm just going to do chocolate and then cookies. Oops cookies, gummy bears, chips, and maybe barbecue flavored chips. So chips underscore BBQ. And then here we need to add a semicolon. So don't forget that. So now we have an enum. And as I mentioned before, an enum is a group of named integer values. So we have the names here, but we don't have the integer values visible. So by default, the first element is going to be zero. And then we have one, two, three, and four. Okay, so chocolate is zero, cookies is one, gummy bears is two, chips is three, and chips barbecue is four. So an enum is a type. So what I can do is I can create a variable of the snack type. So let's create a variable and I'm just going to call this current item and I will assign it to chocolate. Now what happens if I try to print out this current item? So let's do see out current item current item and n9. All right, now let's save and run the program. And you can see we get current item is zero. So the current item is chocolate, which is zero. But remember, these are named integer values. So if I change this to gummy bears and I print the value, we should expect two. OK, so we get current item two. So if they're integer values, can I assign an integer directly to a snack? For instance, let's assign this to value 10. If I save and run the program, you can see we get an error. You cannot convert an integer to a snack. OK, so can I do chocolate plus 1 then? So chocolate is 0, right? So if I do plus 1, we get 1, which should give us cookies. So if I save and run the program, you can see when we do an addition, we convert chocolate to an integer and add one, but then that is going to give us an integer value. And we cannot assign an integer value to a snack. What happens if I try to add two enum values? For instance, chocolate plus cookies. Will this work? Let's save and run the program. And you can see we get the same issue. Basically, when you do an addition, we convert these enums to int values, OK? Now, what we can do actually is we can do the addition and then cast the value back to a snack type. So I can do snack here and then within parentheses, I can do the addition of chocolate and cookies and then convert it to a snack enum type. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get current item one. So zero plus one gives us one and then we convert it back to cookies. Now, this is not something we should be doing with enums. Although this feature exists, it's not something we tend to do with enums. And one reason why is you want to stay within the scope of this enum. 
So right now the values only include 0 to 4. If I do chocolate plus 100, 100 does not exist within this enum group. So if I save and run a program, you can see we get current item 100, but there is no snack 100. And this is going to be important later on when we talk about how to use enum values in our code. So let me just go over a few more things that you should know when assigning an enum variable. So let's change this back to chocolate. And with vending machines, we want the user to press in a number to tell us which snack they want. So if we were to ask the user to input a number using C in, you can see we get this error here. So you cannot C in into an enum variable. So if I save and run the program, you can see we get an error, okay? So this operator is not supported. Instead, what you need to do is create an int variable. And here I'm just going to call it number entered. And actually I can assign this chocolate. So I can assign a snack to an int, but I cannot assign an int to a snack. So when I assign chocolate to this number entered, it converts to a zero. And here I can do C out, enter a number, and then C in number entered. And this will allow me to change this integer variable with the number I enter. So here it says enter a number and I could just put in 400. And you can see it lets us assign a number to the variable. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to compare the number entered against the enum values for our snacks. And the way we're going to do that is by using a switch case statement. But before we go on, I also want to mention that the numbers don't have to be from zero and onwards. You can assign these names any number you want. So let's get rid of these numbers. And usually vending machines are three digit numbers, or at least in the US they are. So chocolate, let's say this is 400. So if we start at 400 for chocolate, the numbers are going to increment starting from this value. So cookies will be 401, gummy bears will be 402, chips will be 403, and chips barbecue would be 404. So let me come this out and let's print out gummy bears. If I save and run the program, you can see gummy bears gets 402. And I can actually separate the values. So maybe I want to distinguish the sweet snacks from the salty snacks. In this case, I can set chips to 600. So now the enum values are going to be 400, 401, 402, and then it jumps to 600 and then 601. So if I save and run the program, you can see gummy bears is 402. And if I change this to chips barbecue, and I save and run the program, we get 601. And the numbers don't have to be in ascending order. I can change this to 300, and if I save and run the program, we get 301 for chips barbecue. But I'm going to change this back to 600 because it makes more sense to have the numbers in order. And whenever you're listing out each name value for the enum, usually you want to only have one enum value per line. All right, so with an enum, basically we avoid having to create individual variables like so. Instead, we can just group them all together under one type. And one more thing to note is these are names. So we can potentially get naming conflicts if I were to do int chips barbecue and set this to 500. Then here you'll see we get an issue and it says a value of type int cannot be used to initialize an entity of type snack. So basically we have an ambiguity here. We have a naming conflict. So to resolve this, if you want to avoid naming conflicts with variables, you would include the identifier for the enum. So in this case, instead of just saying chips barbecue, you would do snack colon colon chips barbecue. And if I save and run the program, you can see there's no conflict with this variable. Okay, so let's get rid of this. All right, so over here, we have the code for asking the user to input a number indicating which snack they wanted. And for this example, let's make it so that the user can enter up to three numbers at a time. Some vending machines allow you to enter multiple numbers and then make the purchase. So for that, I'm going to use a vector and we can have a vector of snack values. And I'm just going to call this items. And for this example, let's just use a for loop and make it simple. So for int i is equal to zero, i less than three, i plus plus. And I'm going to move this code inside here. And I'm going to create a function called add item. And it's going to pass in the vector items and the number entered. 
So when you type in a number in a vending machine, the machine needs to verify that the number corresponds to one of the snacks. So here I'm just going to create another function, void add item, and we're going to pass in the vector of snack, and this is going to be passed by reference. And we're also going to pass in the number entered. So basically, we're just going to check the value that we entered. And to do so, I'm just going to use a switch case statement. So switch number entered. And we're just going to create a case for each snack value. So case snack chocolate. And I'm just going to add a print statement for each snack. So see out chocolate add it. And then we'll do items dot pushback snack chocolate and then break and I'm just going to repeat this for the other four so I'm just going to skip ahead all right so I've added the other four snacks in the switch case statement and let's also add the default case so if it's none of the snack values that means the number that the user input is incorrect so here we're just going to do see out item unknown Okay, so this is our add item function, and we are going to repeat this three times. So let's save and run the program, and let's enter 301, that's item unknown, 402, that's gummy bears added, and 601, and barbecue chips added. All right, so this is how you can use enumerations or enums to represent a vending machine in your code. And earlier, when I mentioned naming conflicts with variables, we can actually have naming conflicts with enums. So for instance, if I take this and I copy and paste it, and I name this snack2, what will happen if I save and run a program? And you can see each value in our enum is duplicated. So for each value, we get a previous declaration conflict. So there are two ways to resolve this. One, you can use a namespace. Basically, you would wrap each enum in its own namespace or you can use an enum class. So with an enum class, you would define each of these values within the scope of just that enum. So if I do enum class snack at enum class snack2, now when I write chocolate is equal to 400 in the second enum, this chocolate value will not have a naming conflict with the chocolate value of this enum snack. Okay, so enum classes are known as scoped enumerations. And if you want to learn more about scope in C++, you should take a look at the previous video where I talk about the different scopes, such as function scope, block scope, and global scope in C++. But notice, now that I changed the enums to enum classes, we get this squiggle, and that is because with enum classes, you lose the implicit type conversion to integer. So here, I cannot print out current item because it is of the snack type, and we lose the implicit conversion to integer. So I would need to do int, like so, and cast this value. And I would need to do the same here. And actually, the value chocolate is ambiguous. It could be from the enum snack or snack2. So in this case, I would just make it from the enum snack. And up here, you can see we are comparing an integer with a snack enum. And before, we just had enum instead of enum class. So we were able to implicitly convert each value to its integer value. Now with enum classes, we lose that implicit conversion. So I cannot make this an integer. Instead, I would just make this a snack. And then down here, when I pass in number entered, I'm just going to cast the integer to a snack. So this is not the best way of doing things, but it's one way to make the enum class work within our code. So if I save and run the program now, I can type in any value. So 500, you can see item unknown, 401 and 402, and we get cookies added and gummy bears added. Okay, so that's pretty much how we can use enums in our code to represent a group of values. And again, to avoid naming conflicts, you might want to use an enum class. But of course, if you use an enum class, then you lose the implicit type conversion to integer. And you can have multiple enums in the same file to represent different things. But just to avoid naming conflicts, you would use an enum class. And some examples would include a mailbox. So here, inbox would be 0, sent would be 1, drafts 2, spam 3, trash 4. 
And of course, as I mentioned, we don't have to always start with zero. We can explicitly define the numbers. So we have unauthorized error would be 401, not found would be 404, internal server error would be 500, bad gateway would be 502, or you can have enums or Pokemon. So if you're familiar with the games, you would know that Bulbasaur is one. And then if we don't explicitly define each number, then it would just be the next number in order. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Okay, so that's it for enumerations or enums in C++. If you found this video helpful, make sure you leave a like. If you have any questions, let me know below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ videos like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.